Well, joining me now to discuss is Byron York, Washington Examiner, chief political correspondent and a Fox Business contributor. Byron, thanks for being with us. Obviously, the remarks coming from the president in just moments, presumably the biggest of his presidency so far. What do you expect to hear from him and what do you think uh, he needs to say in order to give confidence to the folks on the ground in Afghanistan trying to sort this out? Well, I think what he needs to say is that he knows what to do next and tells the American people what to do next. Uh, but I personally do not believe he does know what to do next. I think the, the, the advice we just heard from the ambassador was very, very good. The fundamental problem with this entire debacle in Afghanistan is the, the United States is dependent on the good graces of the Taliban to accomplish this evacuation. And that is a crazy situation to be in. It was clear before today's terrible violence. It's mm -hmm. just as clear right now. So the president needs to show the American people, I agree with the ambassador saying he should admit mistakes, but to show the American people he knows what to do next. Byron, uh, does the August 31st deadline just go out the window today for good? Is that what we need to hear in these remarks? How do you think the president handles that? Well, the idea of, of holding to some agreement uh, with the Taliban, clearly there's been the grossest of violations of that agreement today. So, I, listen, I, I just don't think there's any deal uh, at all. And the question is going to be, and, and we'll have to get a better feel for public opinion on this, uh, do people want to see a more extensive American effort to get Afghan, Afghan allies out of Afghanistan, or do they want to see however many U.S. citizens there are in uh, left in Afghanistan, see them get out, and then U.S. forces get out, and that's it. Mm -hmm. uh, after that point, uh, the United States, as the president has suggested, would maintain a counterterrorism presence covertly in the country. Uh, but other than that, out. Byron, a lot of people, and quickly on this, I think this is one of those watershed moments where maybe you get some realignment because of the images we're seeing and how badly it's playing right now in the U.S. Very quickly, your reaction to that. Are we at one of those moments? Well, the, the president's job approval rating had been slipping significantly before this all happened. Uh, he, his, his job approval rating well into the 50s earlier was based almost entirely on the public's approval of his handling of the coronavirus pandemic. Uh, clearly, that changed with the arrival of the Delta variant. It has now gone down for his approval rating on the uh, economy. And his approval rating on, on this operation in Afghanistan virtually did not exist before today. It was 25 percent in a recent poll. So I think this is going to have devastating effects politically on the president. Byron, at what point do uh, folks in the military, folks in the State Department who maybe disagree with way, where things are going, they've been loyal to the president, they followed his lead, but at some point they say this is wrong and it is going in a very bad direction. At what, at what point do those folks start to speak up independently? At what point do we notice that? Do you see it coming to that right now? Well, we may not be there yet, even with today's horrendous events. Uh, the president is the president, and uh, certainly in the military, he is the commander in chief. They have a special relationship of anybody else in the government with the commander in chief. As far as diplomats are concerned, there's absolutely nothing preventing uh, a Biden administration diplomat from resigning and making a public statement of why he or she is doing that. Uh, perhaps we'll see it. Uh, but here again, I, I believe that even with these horrendous events today, you're probably not going to see that. You brought up the idea of resignations. A lot of people are talking about the need for just cleaning house, getting rid of folks who have been at the top of the decision making apparatus here. Do you see that happening? Will there be forced resignations? Will folks get fired? Does that have to happen in some ways for the administration to regain even a shred of credibility? I think ultimately it does. I think right now the administration is going to say, look, no heads are going to roll right now. We're not going to fire anybody right at this moment. We got to get through this. 
Uh, but afterwards, I, I, that seems like it absolutely has to happen. You're going to have certainly Republicans on Capitol Hill calling for um, the Secretary of State Blinken and others uh, to go. Uh, I have no idea how far, how high up those calls will go, but I, I think it's very clear that later on, after after this situation is finally resolved, we will see such resignations. Byron, one of the biggest fears in all of this are the ripple effects. So it's not just what happens in Afghanistan. It's not just what happens at the fence at the airport in Kabul, but it's what happens when intelligence and data and weaponry and frankly, confidence starts to spread to other adversaries around the globe, Iran, Russia, North Korea, other places. What kind of ripple effects do you expect from the catastrophe we've seen in Afghanistan? Well, I think the biggest will be the um, loss of confidence in American presidential leadership, that is specifically in President Joe Biden. Remember when this Afghan problem first started happening a couple of weeks ago, uh, there was a lot of talk about, well, gee, what will the leaders of China think now that the United States is just uh, running out of Afghanistan? Not the question of actually leaving Afghanistan, but doing it in such a, uh, a just a disastrous way. So I think that you will see uh, other world leaders questioning uh, Joe Biden's judgment. And uh, remember uh, that famous quote from Robert Gates, the former uh, defense secretary who served under Republican and Democratic uh, administrations, who said that Joe Biden had been wrong mm. on uh, every major foreign policy question of his lifetime. So uh, you're going to see things like that quoted. Remember uh, President Barack Obama, the, the president to Joe Biden's vice president, once said, don't underestimate Joe's ability to mess things up. Mm. And he didn't use the word mess. Yeah. So uh, there's going to be a lot of questioning of President Biden's judgment. Mm. Wrong indeed. Stay with us, Byron. We're going to go to Fox's Chad Pergram for the latest on Capitol Hill. Chad, what can you tell us? Good afternoon, Brian. Well, bipartisan lawmakers have said for days the U.S. should stay past August 31st in Afghanistan. The Senate Majority Leader Mitch McConnell says, quote, terrorists will not stop fighting just because our politicians grow tired of fighting them. The House Minority Leader Kevin McCarthy says Congress must reconvene so the administration can brief members. Congress doesn't have to be in session to be briefed. House Speaker Nancy Pelosi has requested additional briefings. The Senate Majority Leader Chuck Schumer called the attack, quote, heinous. He said the terrorists will be brought to justice. Here are questions from lawmakers. Does the U.S. stay? Does it send in more troops? With 535 members of Congress, that means there are 535 secretaries of state and secretaries of defense. And here's one view. I think the president of the United States should come out and say all bets are off. Uh, the, the Taliban have absolutely defied this agreement by not securing. We are going to expand this operation. I'd put more military in there. I'd get every single American out. And I'd start killing bad guys. The State Department today told congressional staff to stop directing people to the airport to evacuate. The missive read, quote, all staff engaging in this type of uncoordinated messaging to people on the ground must cease due to the security situation. We are told that some offices won't comply. Lawmakers and their aides have cobbled together an ad hoc system to get people out. That's because they believe the administration bungled the evacuation. Brian. Chad, thank you. Byron York is back with us for reaction. Byron, interesting as you bring Congress into this. Very oddly, and I think in a very tone deaf way, they were focused on $3.5 trillion in spending earlier this week in the midst of all of it. But this is becoming a very difficult situation for the president's allies in Congress. They cannot deny how badly this is going. At what point does Congress have no choice but to muster an independent response here if the president continues on this trajectory? Well, first of all, they need to find out more of what's going on. I think we had kind of an embarrassing situation this week. Two uh, members of the House of Representatives, one Democrat, one Republican, Representative Seth Moulton, uh, the Democrat, Representative Peter Meyer, the uh, Republican, both veterans, uh, made a secret 
trip to Afghanistan. It was unauthorized. Uh, they looked around for less than 24 hours, but they tried to get a feeling for the situation at the Kabul airport. Um, and they reported uh, that it was a pretty terrible situation, that there was no way the United States was going to get everybody it wanted to get out by the deadline of August 31st or even September 11th. And the reaction to this, they said they went as part of their oversight responsibilities. The reaction to this was Nancy Pelosi saying, we do not approve of this, do not do this. And anybody who's even thinking about it, any member of Congress who wants to go over there and see about it, see it with their own eyes, forget about it. We got similar uh, criticism of Moulton and Meyer from the White House and from the State Department and from the Justice Department, excuse me, the, the Defense Department. So the entire government kind of came down on these, these two guys who wanted to go see this for themselves. More members of Congress need to see it for themselves. So uh, I, th I think this has not been a good week for the congressional leadership. As you said, they were uh, certainly the Democratic leadership was obsessed with passing this $3.5 trillion spending framework mm -hmm. uh, while this was going on in Afghanistan. And then they smacked down two members who actually had the curiosity to try to see for themselves. Byron, you can't escape the conclusion here that so much of this was staged to set up a speech for President Biden on the 20th anniversary of 9-11. And that has gone so horrendously wrong at this point. It looks like that date may come. And in fact, all it may be is a marker of how badly we have attempted to end this. And in fact, we may be in the midst of moving troops back in at that point. Who knows? It could, but it certainly seems like it's going to come September 11th uh, with the Taliban flag flying over government buildings, including the U.S. former U.S. embassy uh, in Kabul. And you're right about the, the the messaging purpose of getting this done by September 11th, so that President Biden uh, could come out uh, and say on the 20th anniversary of 9/11, our longest war is over. And I, Joe Biden, ended it. But the, the, remember, the, the problem here was not the desire to leave Afghanistan. That, that's a bipartisan desire shared by President Trump and President Obama before him.